I'm joined here with City of Cold Lake Mayor Craig Copeland. Now, this year has obviously presented difficulties with the COVID-19 pandemic. How has the City of Cold Lake adjusted? Well, it's certainly the, the COVID has impacted everybody, right? Whether you're a business owner, uh, the kids in school, um, you know, mom and dad just focusing now, okay, who's going to stay home with the kids? But, uh, you know, in terms of the municipality, our position has been since day one is uh, just to follow the chief medical officer's advice and her direction. And right away, our, our community actually worked right away with the Alberta Health Services. Uh, the nurses uh, community health were actually swabbing people out in the parking lot uh, outside their building. And, and uh, you know, our CAO and staff looked at that one, you know, I think we can do better than that. We offered the uh, North Hockey Arena. So we turned over the, the hockey rink into a swabbing center, uh, outfitted it the way they wanted it. And actually was really successful all spring and into the summer. And then as, as COVID, of course, wasn't going away, um, we then moved them uh, to the Agriplex. And the Ag Society was really uh, gracious uh, to allow the nurses to go in there as the, as the 811 swabbing site. And uh, so, you know, our role has been there to assist the local health professionals uh, in anything they need. That really, and same with at the hospital with the docs over there uh, and the hospital manager, whatever they need, uh, the city's here to assist them. And, you know, there hasn't been all negatives this year, like we mentioned. So what has been some positives for the city? Well, the positives, I think right now you're starting to see uh, just south of town here is a gas uh, pipeline that's going in by TC Energy. And they got all contractors in, in the community that are staying in hotels, mostly doing takeout food for the restaurants. But, uh, you know, you're talking of a couple hundred people in town, which is filling up the rooms. You know, our, our hotels were empty all summer long, except for we got a lot of um, tourist traffic over the summer. I mean, that was so kind of interesting this summer, how many people came to Cold Lake and, and as a tourist. And we were getting people from all over Southern Alberta coming up and going, wow, didn't realize that this lake is, is so beautiful in that. And, and with our bike park uh, that we've put in place with the society that's running it, a lot of people are just coming up and exploring Cold Lake and really seeing all, all that there is to offer. And then there's a big announcement by the federal government with uh, investing on the air base finally. Uh, they're gonna be knocking down the old hangars and building up this big, huge office building for the, for the men and women out there. And uh, so, you know, about a half a billion dollars worth of construction is gonna be going on the base, probably from about 2022 to 25 would be the big focus, but they'll be, they'll be ramping up now and that's gonna be really exciting. Uh, I think the federal government spending is really gonna put Coal Lake, uh, you know, it's a, lead, a leading community growing in the next few years uh, over those that are tied uh, to resources, right? Which is tough right now. But you know what, like inside Cold Lake, we're really excited about the uh, pipeline to uh, the ocean, uh, Trans Mountain Pipe. We've got, uh, you know, that's gonna really uh, allow Northeastern Alberta to start moving oil to the ocean. Uh, hopefully Keystone will, will uh, with the new change of the president, won't be impacted. Uh, the Keystone and Line 3, uh, well, those ones are really gonna be key for the, for the heavy crude up in our area. I think it's been exciting. I think things are gonna to start to move. Once we get over this COVID, I really think we're gonna see a big growth phase up in the Northeast. And you know, this year we've seen a huge push for support of local businesses. So how have the residents of Cold Lake been su with supporting them this year? Well, you know, there's unfortunately on the internet, you know, you can do a lot of internet shopping, but you can really see people are, are uh, trying to support the local businesses as much as they can. Uh, and, and there's a lot of groups reaching out and sort of marketing and saying, hey, this is uh, this home piece business is available, or you can shop at this uh, business here for this product. And so people are you know, trying their best to, to shop local. I mean, I, you, you see our, our uh, downtown and our malls. I mean, it's pretty busy. Uh, you know, it really is a pandemic going on. Uh, but, you know, people are doing a really good job. They're being responsible. They're wearing a mask. Uh, when they're very close with people, they're wearing masks and, and you know, uh, people are very aware of the situation with the COVID and, and you know, I think everybody, whether you're coming into Cold Lake to shop or you're a Cold Lake resident, I think everybody deserves a lot of credit. They're, they're really stepping forward and, and, and doing, their, doing their part. And with the finalization of ID 349, what is the city's reaction on this finally moving forward? Well, this is a, this is a huge closure on the file. I mean, this has been a long lasting, you know, uh, you know, I just want to recognize that MLA David Hansen and the Minister Allard, uh, you know, they both deserve a ton of credit. Uh, the MD of Bonneville Council uh, were there as a major partner. Uh, and we all four municipalities worked together for, for a vision for the future. And so for the city itself, 
uh, it's going to allow councils to now really put some money away uh, in terms of putting it in towards the infrastructure, recreation, fixing the projects. It's a helping hand. That's how I describe it. You know, Coal Lake uh, relies about 20, 21 million dollars from residents' uh, taxes and from the business community. And this money from uh, in the industrial taxes coming into an urban community is going to be that helping hand that's really going to give us the ability to really invest in our community. And it's, uh, you know, everybody that was involved did a great job. And uh, certainly the minister and, and the MLA Hanson pushing it over the end uh, was the, the big key in everything. And next year, council is forecasting a 0% tax increase. So what does that mean for, to you to offer, be able to offer that to residents? Well, it was a pretty much a no brainer that, you know, doing a tax increase in, in this environment wasn't going to be a popular thing. But uh, certainly what we've done is uh, the staff have done a great job on conserving the 2020 budget. We have some money available for 2020. We're bringing it over to 2021 and we're plowing into capital projects. Like we're going hard with our, uh, our, our capital. And we're, what we're trying to do is do a wide range of projects so that a lot of companies, local companies, have an opportunity to do, you know, half a million, a million, two million dollar contracts and try to spread the love around and uh, keep people floating. And so we're going to see, people are going to see a lot of work getting done in Coal Lake. Um, you know, there's some big projects, Lakeshore Drive, which is from the marina up to the Freedom Ridge condos. That whole bank is kind of falling into, into the water. We've got to come in and fix the undergrounds there. So there's some, that, that's a really exciting project, long overdue. Uh, and of course, the big one in Coal Lake is the wastewater treatment plant, a brand new one. Nobody wants to talk about when you flush your toilet, what happens. But uh, that one's a long overdue project and council's putting some serious money behind that one. Probably gonna uh, go for this. We are going up for design, of course, on that project. But you probably won't see construction for that until the following year, 2022. But we're, we've positioned money for projects. That's what we do with our cash is also position money um, in, you know, in reserves for projects so that we can come in and pay cash for projects. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Mayor Copeland. Thank you for having me.